Module 1, Segment 3, System Settings. In this segment, you will learn how to assign and modify Quantum Control's system settings. Changes here should be made only when logged in as the system administrator. Please note that this training segment assumes you have already completed Module 1, Segment 1 and 2. If you are currently logged in under another username, take a moment to log in as the system administrator. When you are ready, use your mouse to select the user menu in the top left of the screen. In the user menu, select Maintain System Settings. The System Setup window will open. This may take a few moments. On the left-hand side are the functional areas. As you highlight a functional area, the settings for that area will be displayed on the right. We'll begin with the first area, the System Global Settings. When the System Global Settings are selected on the left, you will see a series of six tabs on the right. The first is the Auto Numbering tab. On this tab, the section labeled System Assigned Numbers contains a series of checkboxes for the different modules of quantum control. A check in the box means that numbers for new records in these modules will be system generated. Unchecking the box will cause the system to prompt you for a number as new records are created. It is recommended that you leave all boxes checked. The second half of this tab is labeled Company Management Codes. The radio buttons here determine whether reference codes for new companies are generated alphanumeric by the system, numeric by the system, or if they are entered manually by the user. The recommended setting is automatic alphanumeric. Next is the Number Log tab. Click on the tab with your mouse to bring it forward. Here, you can assign numbering sequences for the different records that will be generated by Quantum. Let's set the purchase order numbering sequence to begin at 10001. With your mouse, click Purchase Orders. Then, select the Edit Action button. The Editing Type window opens. In the last number field, type 10000. This will cause the next purchase order generated to have a number of 10001. We can also assign a single character prefix code to precede all numbers generated. Let's assign a prefix of P to our purchase orders. Place your cursor in the prefix field and type P. Select OK. You will be returned to the System Setup window. The Number Log tab will still be forward. You should see that purchase orders will have a prefix of P and will begin at 10001. On your own, take a moment to set beginning numbers for all the modules you will be using. Now, use your mouse to select the Miscellaneous Settings tab. In the section labeled Field Formatting, you can set the number of decimal places to be used when entering quantity, cost, and price. The recommended setting is two decimal places for cost and price, and zero for quantity. But you should set it as best suits your business model. If operating in a home currency other than U.S. dollars, you may wish to replace the dollar sign with the character of your home currency 
in the currency format field. Otherwise, the currency format should be set as displayed here. As you begin learning about how to work with different records in quantum control, you will learn what drives the statuses of those records, making them open or closed, for example. When referencing records in quantum, you will be able to quickly see the record status by means of a customizable color system. The status colors setting determines what colors are used. As you can see here, open records will display in black and closed in red. Invoices that have been printed will display in green. Those that have been posted in red. To change the status color settings, use your mouse to click on a drop-down list and double-click on the color to apply. Next, take your mouse and select the Company Names tab. Here, you will be able to record your company's contact details, such as the address. Select Change User Company Data. The Change User Company Data window opens. Here, you will type your company's Bill 2 address, telephone, fax, and main email information. Here, you will type Ship 2 address information and tax information. Take a moment to complete these fields and select OK. Click on the Report Images tab. Here, you can load electronic logos and signatures that can be inserted into printed forms you will be generating. Quantum Control currently allows the use of images in bitmap .bmp format. Images should measure 1 by 5 inches, 485 by 109 pixels, RGB color mode, 8-bit channel. The file size should be less than 175 kilobytes. To insert a logo image, select Add. The Select an Image to Add window will open. Browse to the image and select Open. The Description window will open. Type a label for the new image in the Enter a Description for the Selected Picture field. This label is what you will see when you are selecting the image to print on documents. Select OK. You will be returned to the Report Images tab, where you will see the image and its description displayed. If you wish to remove images, you can use the Delete Action button. Depending on the sizes of the images you are using, you may wish to use the Stretch Image option. This will put the image into the recommended size, but may also affect its appearance. Experiment with this option to see what looks best with the images you are using. The last option on this tab is the Print Trademark on Documents checkbox. The trademark is a message that will appear on the bottom of documents you generate. It reads that this document has been generated using Quantum Control licensed to your company. Uncheck this box if you wish to suppress this message from printing on the bottom of the documents you generate. Before leaving the System Global Settings area, select OK to save the changes you have made. A confirmation window will open asking if you want to save changes in non-system fields for all users. Select Yes. The settings will now be applied to all users. Now, take your mouse and select Inventory Management. In Training Module 2, Inventory Management, you will learn that there are several user-defined fields in Part Number and Stockline records. These are text fields that can be labeled as you like 
and be used to store whatever information you need. Once you have familiarized yourself with these records, you can set the labels for these fields here. When you set a field label, select OK to apply the change. The confirmation window will open again, asking if you want to save changes in non-system fields for all users. Select Yes. The settings will now be applied to all users. Take your mouse and select Company Management. As in Inventory Management, you will also be able to set field labels in Company and Rolodex records. You will learn about these records in Training Module 3, Company Management. Again, once you have familiarized yourself with these records, you can set the labels for these fields here. When you set a field label, select OK to apply the change. Select the Close Action button to close the System Setup window. To recap what we have learned, we have reviewed the six tabs for system settings in the Global System Settings area. And we have seen how to set field labels for user-defined fields in both the Inventory Management and Company Management modules. You may now proceed to Module 1, Segment 4, Additional Setup Options.